So are you a business person, a pastor, teacher, professor, somebody who normally talks to a group of people and you need to move that online? Well, I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. Hey everybody, my name is Tyler and I make videos related to camera gear, audio gear, and video production. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what you need to get to get yourself set up to live stream to YouTube, Facebook, Zoom, pretty much wherever. And so uh, before we jump into this, I just wanna say that this shouldn't cost you thousands of dollars. Um, it's actually relatively cheap to get into this and get started. You don't have to buy top of the line stuff, but y'all shouldn't sh also should not buy dirt cheap stuff because to an extent you do get what you pay for. And all this stuff in this video is going to be related to streaming from a desktop or a laptop. Uh, this isn't going to be talking about streaming from a device such as an iPhone or some kind of tablet or phone. And so let's just jump right into it. And the first thing would be the camera. And now a lot of people would think that the camera is the most important part of a live stream. And while it is important, I actually think the microphone is more important, but you should still try to get a pretty good quality camera. Now I'm using the Logitech C920. There is an updated version, and this has been a very reliable camera for me, and I really enjoy it. Um, it usually runs around $75 last time I looked, uh, but anything that I do mention in this video, I'll put the link to it down in the description below or below this video where you can check it out. And um, it's just been a really good camera. It just looks really good as long as you have some good lighting. Um, you get a really nice image and as you can see like the backgrounds blurry and that's good because it helps you in the foreground stand up because if everything's in focus things just kind of get lost um, so it's good to have a camera that can kind of give you a little bit of a depth of field and so the Logitech C920 is a USB camera so it just plugs into a USB port on your computer and so there are many other options available a lot from Logitech so I would definitely recommend Logitech they're kind of the standard in the industry for things like webcams, um, but there are other options available, but I've just had really good luck with Logitech products. The other option is to get something like a DSLR or mirrorless camera and plug into something like a, an Elgato cam link or a capture card into your computer. Um, chances are you're not gonna need this um, if you're just kind of looking for a temporary solution. Um, something like an Elgato or a built-in capture card or for somebody who's streaming like every single day or on a regular basis, kind of in a more professional studio setup, but there is the option if you want to do it. Um, I would recommend, if you do want to go that route, get a DSLR or mirrorless camera that gives you clean HDMI output. So whenever you plug the HDMI cord into it and then into the capture card, you're not getting all of the um, interfaces that are shown on the actual camera, like the audio levels, ISO levels, depth of field, um, aperture, all that stuff. And so uh, you can do that. It is gonna run you more money than just buying a webcam, but that option is available if you really wanna take your quality to the next level. Now for a microphone, pretty much what thousands of people use and would recommend is the Blue Yeti. Blue is a really good company. Um, I've owned their microphones before. This is actually a Blue Spark that I've had for five years and I've been using it um, regularly for those five years, at least five years, and it has done extremely well for me. Really good build quality, um, reliable. And uh, the Blue Yeti is an extremely versatile microphone. You can use it for um, you know, a, a one-person setup. Uh, it's bi-directional as well. You can have it for two people if you want to do like a podcast. It can be omnidirectional, which means it, has, it can sit in, like, in a room surrounded by people and pick up audio on all sides. Um, it can be switched in those different patterns right on the microphone. It has live uh, monitoring. So basically you can plug in your headphones and listen to yourself live through the microphone. And the best part about this microphone is that it plugs in via USB. You don't need a soundboard or anything fancy and you can control the gain on the microphone um, on the actual microphone itself. And so the Blue Yeti usually runs around $100 to $130, uh, depending if you can find it on sale. There's multiple different colors and configurations. Uh, but it's a really reliable microphone. A lot of people enjoy it. I actually am trying to order one and get one here because I need one for my laptop setup um, for our streams, for our worship service, for our church. We do worship here and then our pastor streams from a different location. Uh, but I want a Blue Yeti set up for my laptop because it's a lot easier to set up. This uh, setup I have here is much more permanent. And it is the other way you can go, which would be to get a USB mixer which you can plug in LXR, LXR, yeah, XLR microphones into that mixer. The Blue Spark is an XLR microphone. It plugs into this mixer, and then you can control the EQ, the gain, um, your monitoring, a lot of different settings. And this is definitely a step up from just plugging in a USB microphone, um, but this is definitely uh, probably more than what most people need, but the option is there if you're curious about it. 
But there are other options besides the Blue Yeti for USB microphones. Um, don't go super cheap because you definitely want a good microphone because good quality audio, in my opinion, is more important than good quality video because I will watch a video that looks a little bit blurry, but it has good audio, but it's hard to listen to a video that might have really good video, but it just sounds bad. It sounds garbled. It sounds like you're in a tin can and you just want to click off of it. So having a good quality microphone is very important. The next thing I want to talk about is lighting. And so you can have the best camera in the world. If you don't have good lighting, it doesn't even matter. And so to kind of uh, show you that, uh, let me turn the light off that I have. This is actually a Draycast light. It's about a hundred some dollars. Um, you don't need to get something like this unless you have more of a traditional studio setup. Like I have one behind me here um, that you can see. But let me show you what it looks like when this is turned off without changing my camera settings. This is what we look like. We don't look good at all. We're dark and blurry and grainy and underexposed and if i crank up the exposure like this this could work but it just doesn't look as good now my white balance is going to be off a little bit because it's a different color temperature from the ceiling light but um you know there's harsh shadows here because of my ceiling light and it's just it's not evenly lit and it just doesn't look as good so um, an option you can go and that i would recommend uh, go with is a, a led tube light and that's what this is and you can get these on Amazon for like 20 bucks. They're extremely cheap, but they're extremely useful. And so let me bring my exposure back down to where it was. Um, so now I'm back to where I was. I'm gonna turn on this tube light. And my quality is pretty much close to what I had before. Like I said, the color balance is gonna be a little bit different because it's a little bit different than the other light I had set up. But the nice thing about this light is it's super portable, super cheap, charges via USB, and it can go on full power for about four hours. And it also is dimmable. And if you dim it down, it can go up to six hours. Um, it has a couple different light temperatures. This is a mixed light. Uh, you can get a blue light and then a warm tungsten light. And then you can dim it just by holding it down. It's a pretty dim. And then hold it down again to bring it back up. And so I would definitely recommend something like this. You guys don't need to go out and buy a super fancy $100, $150 light set. Um, that's just not necessary, especially if you're doing a lot of on-camera or on-laptop um, streams or recordings because you don't need lights coming at you in all different directions. Now, if you're doing more of a traditional video studio, yeah, you might want to think about investing in some more expensive lights, but this is going to be perfectly fine for somebody who's just streaming. And so the last thing that I want to talk about is the desktop or PC that you're using and your streaming software. And so if you've bought a computer in the past couple years, chances are it can probably handle streaming to YouTube or Facebook with a simple camera and a microphone. You're not streaming gameplay footage or anything super high frame rate or computer um, intensive. And so uh, most computers can handle this fine. If you're curious, you can do a little bit of research on it. There's also some benchmarks out there and some tests, um, but most computers can handle it fine. Now, as far as software, uh, a lot of so, uh, services actually have pretty good built-in software. Uh, Zoom, for example, uh, which is getting really popular lately, it has pretty good uh, options available. You can select your camera source, you can select your microphone source and adjust levels. Um, Google Hangouts is the same way. Skype, um, pretty much a lot of these video conferencing uh, services have pretty much everything you need. But if you wanna take it a step up and make your live streams a little bit better, um, and I know for Facebook Live, uh, you, pretty sure you have to use something like this and it's a encoder program and what I use is called OBS open broadcaster software and it's free and I will show it to you here now you're gonna see a lot of like inception right here just because it's capturing my screen but OBS is capturing my screen which is capturing my screen so it's infinite um, but here's my uh, Logitech webcam settings I had over here um, actually right here this is actually another source uh, to window um, you can really customize this to however you want you can add windows display captures you can uh, add video captures if you had a capture device like an Elgato you could add it and you could select it here and then your footage from your DSLR your um, game system whatever you're capturing would show up um, you can add a text you can add overlays really there's just a lot of options here and uh, the options are really limitless. Um, you can monitor your audio here, uh, your desktop audio if you want to capture desktop audio, um, and then your capture device audio as well. If you wanted to capture like um, a video game, you can 
say you only want to capture a little bit of that audio and then all of your mic audio. It's a really good program and I really haven't had any issues with it and I definitely would recommend it. If you're going to be live streaming to something like Facebook, um, it'll give you live stream settings and then you can easily adjust them here in the stream section. And if you click on the stream section, you, you can click on this drop down and it'll give you a lot of presets, but you can also click custom and then you can just post in the uh, server that you're streaming to and then your stream key. And then if you hit apply and then start streaming, you'll actually be st uh, starting to send your stream to wherever you're streaming. So Facebook, YouTube, wherever. And so if you guys want a separate video, I can make a separate video on how to actually set up your stream and hit go and start streaming. Uh, but this is pretty much just everything you need to get set up and get started. So just to recap, you need a pretty good camera, you need a good microphone, you need a cheap light, um, just something to light your face up that you can control, and you need some software or a decent computer to stream your, um, stream your video. And so if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You can leave them down in the comments section below. If you're interested in further information and you want to reach out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, either via uh, messaging or uh, phone call, Skype call, whatever, I do offer video consultation and video training services. And so th that is an option if you're really looking to dive a little bit deeper into this. But I just want to make this video, um, drop some knowledge for you guys on how to get set up with a simple um, streaming setup. It really doesn't have to cost that much money. Um, it's a little bit of an investment, but uh, I, if this was just a one-off thing, um, like you would only need to do this maybe once, I would say, you know what, okay, just use your built-in webcam or use your, use your phone. Um, you can get good enough. You can get away with that for a week or two. But if you're looking at a long-term setup, like a month or two or three months of doing this on a weekly basis or a daily basis, you should probably invest in something that's gonna give your viewers a better experience. That way you can keep them engaged, keep them watching. That way you can spread your message or your teaching or whatever you're trying to do and keep your audience involved. And so that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did, hit the like button and drop a comment down below with what you maybe learned or maybe what you're planning to stream or maybe this solves any problem you might have um, or you can also drop some questions down there and I'd be happy to answer them. You can also reach out to me on my Twitter and my Instagram pages, they're Tyler Miller TV on both of those platforms. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell, that way you're notified whenever new videos go live. And so like I said, that's it for this one. Thank you guys again so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.